welcome to this week's episode of the PokerUpdate.com Weekly Burn and Turn. We will be discussing things on our poker wish list, gimmick tournaments we'd like to see, and we'll update you on the Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure, which is where Robbie is, which is also why I'm here. So stay tuned. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the PokerUpdate.com Weekly Burn and Turn. I'm Shira Steiglitz. And I'm Shimmy Weiss. And I'm still not Robbie Straczynski. No, because Robbie's not here. He's in the Bahamas. You suck, Robbie. You but really But we miss do. you, man. We do. Not no, too much. I don't miss him. Well, Shira doesn't miss you. You're in the Bahamas. I have no... <laughs> Anyway, we have some great topics to discuss uh, this week. So why don't we just dive right in there, much Absolutely. like Robbie's doing into the water yes. at the Bahamas on the beach. Yeah, have we mentioned yet that he sucks, that he left us behind? He we sucks. did. All right. All right. <laughs> First topic is actually an interesting article written by James Gwill on three gimmick tournaments we'd like to see. As we know, there are many, many tournaments going on, and... And sometimes we like to see some more interesting some sort aspects. Of change. A bit of a change, you know. Change is always good. You right? gotta break the routine. I mean, look, I love you know Texas Hold'em. You know, I love the the typical games, but you want to have something that's a that changes things up a little bit, keeps it interesting for you. And I love the little gimmicks. And what he put out there was some good suggestions. I have to say, I really like the idea of the Walking Dead um, feature, the Walking Dead event. Um, but I think they. The people who want to come back, the walkers, should actually dress like zombies. That would be amazing. They can't just that be like That would be amazing. You there. have to actually come dressed as a zombie. To be able to possibly come back into the tournament, you have to dress like you're a zombie. Absolutely. And then the you concept was interesting, that if you get knocked out, you still have another chance. That uh, They take a small percentage of the players, that was a suggestion, and bring them back the next day. I think it's a great idea. And, and moving off of that, I think there should be like a Halloween event. Like on Halloween, have a tournament and people have to dress up and maybe make them dress up in a certain way. A themed ho uh, Halloween. Well, who is it that always dresses up? Isn't it Phil Hellmuth that always dresses up to tour the main event? Um, I'm, I'm not believe, quite sure. I'm pretty sure it is. So he would have to just come as himself since he dresses up for all the other events, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I guess so. But... Um, I also like the idea of the video poker. I love video poker, and I'm a mm -hmm. sucker for pressing that button to double or nothing. That's probably where I'd end up losing everything. Yeah, it's probably where a lot of people would end up losing <laughs> everything. <laughs> and, but it gives a little bit more of a gamble afterwards, you know, especially for the people who go out early. You know, they don't get a very large payout. It gives them a chance to double up or lose it all. <laughs> I personally, I would take my winnings and split. You know, if I'm if I'm going to hit the payout, I'm just going to be happy about that. <laughs> you know, what I'll but, take what I can get. <laughs> I don't know. A part of me thinks like that, and the other part of me is like, hmm, I could make some more money. There you go. You know what type of uh, gimmick tournament I would love to see, though? I actually ran one like this where we did a bounty tournament, and I hope you guys are listening. This is, you know, copyrighted by Shimmy the Fish, so you could contact me for more details. But a bounty tournament is a tournament where everyone is able to put, basically, a bounty on other players. Kind of like a knockout where you get a bonus. You know, you knock someone out and you get a certain amount of money. Here, you put a bounty on someone, like someone gets you a bad beat on the river, so you put a bounty on them, and anyone who knocks them out gets your bounty. So it's oh. kind of enticing other people. It's like, that guy really annoyed me. I want you to take him out. And, it, and you, could get the, you could get the viewers involved as well. Viewers could be putting bounties on the players. That's, I think that's actually great. It, it definitely um, makes it so it's more interactive Absolutely. with the people who watch it. And, and speaking of making things much more interactive, I think it kind of rolls into our second article about uh, five things on our poker wish list for 2016. Also by James Gwill, I think he m didn't necessarily mention it in his article, but I definitely think making poker events more interactive with the people who watch it Absolutely. should definitely be something that would be on my poker wish list. I love watching poker and having the ability to make it more interactive. Absolutely. I would have a lot of fun with that. You know what? I'm looking for a good fantasy poker league. That would be fun. You know, get, get the fans involved. I know they have something like that, but I would like something a little bit more involved. It would be an incredible opportunity where, like, in an actual tournament, the fans are there and railing, the, uh, railing all the players all the way through. And uh, that way you could actually be involved with each tournament as it's going on. It would be a very nice a little interaction between the players and the, and the uh, players and the fans. Well, one point that... Um 
James made that I liked is that more pros need to take a stance during regulated poker. He had mentioned that, you know, the Poker Players Alliance and Daniel Negreanu, they do a lot, but it kind of stops there. We have the, the Poker Stars uh, California Pro Tour. There needs to be, I think, a bit more. I, I think other than pros saying, yeah, I support online poker reg legislation in the U.S., I think maybe they should do more. Maybe they should actually do something. Like right? yeah, lobby for it. Talk, be the ones to talk to to the you know the people in charge and 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 start really getting the ball rolling. For sure, and the fans are going to follow the pros. Exactly. When the pros stand up, you guys got to be loud, you know, and we'll follow you I, because we we want it to happen as well. I you got to lead the way. I think we exactly they need to lead it. We're just people who like poker. We don't have that much of a loud voice, so to speak. Well, but well, well, I, I've got a quite a loud voice. Well, I'm I'm a, I'm a New Yorker, and I, yeah, I do have a loud That's, voice. You, you have to have a loud voice. You cannot <laughs> drive in New York if you don't have a loud voice. Oh God. No, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying that in terms of they're they're the people on the posters uh, in the commercials. They're what, they're the face of poker. They need to be the ones, and we we'd follow. Um, Absolutely. Suit. Um, I liked a, I liked a lot of the suggestions, specifically the charity one. I think and we've so. seen that a few times. We've seen many tournaments where they where they have some sort of charity benefit. Um, but I would like to see more of it. Like James said, that's a very good suggestion. Um, I, as a poker player on my own, I try to give a, I try to give a portion of all my winnings to charity. Unfortunately, my charities have not been doing too well. They've been receiving negative money. That's correct. But I'm happy that at least you know they cover me. No, they don't cover <laughs> no, me. Don't. But it's it's something nice, you know, when you. Don't even have to. Uh, you don't even have to be connected with a charity. You could give it as a recommendation. You could give. If I was at a tournament any time and they said to me that you know you press a button and then part of your winnings are going to go to a charity and you do that before you even get to the before you even break into the payout, I would look at that as a good luck charm. I would do that. But from it's the beginning. not even the players. Uh, he had mentioned that you know maybe a couple dollars from everyone's buy-in goes to a charity and that these poker tournaments. They don't need to create their own charity. They can just sign up with uh, another charity. Many, many players have done that. Vanessa Selbst. Um, mm -hmm. That's God, right. I, I can't. My brain is... We've, you know, this is actually how I met Robbie Straczynski oh, way really? back when, when we were just kids. No, so we, uh, I met with him because he used to run a charity poker tournament. And it was a 50-50 type tournament. 50% went to charity, 50% you played with. And it was, a, it was a wonderful event. I took sixth place out of 100 did, people. Did you make anything? I made money, that's right. This is why, you know, this is how Robbie remembers me. Did you make at least your buy-in back? I did, wow. I did quite well. And the year afterwards, my wife, I think she took first place, if I'm not mistaken. But that's her money. That's her, well, well also my winnings was her well, money. I was about to that's say. <laughs> <laughs> All the money is Shimmy's wife's money. Yeah. What else would you like to see, though, from your personal um, uh, wish I would list? like to say, I think I'd like to see women taking a larger stance in, in, in poker, seeing more of the female players dominating. And because and, you hear all about uh, Negranu and, and Somerville, but you don't hear a lot about women players. And I, I personally, as a woman who does like to play poker, would like to see more women front and center. I would like to hear them a little bit louder about equality on the, at the poker table because we see the problems that are facing women at the poker table and the only way it's going to change is if everybody speaks up about it. And I think it's a problem that people don't recognize and aren't loud enough about. And that's definitely, I would want to see that as well. Not just the women, the female players, but the male players as well, that we should be speaking up about that to change poker, to make it a little bit more, uh, a little more welcoming for the female players. Um, yeah, and, and something else I'd like to see, and maybe it's just because I personally don't make a lot of money <laughs> playing poker, but I... Welcome to the club. <laughs> There's but, a lot of us here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I would like to see more people loving poker again for the game and not necessarily the money that they make. Yeah, money is great. I mean, who, who doesn't love money? But, you know, I, when I first really started playing poker, it was actually when I moved here and it was a way for me to get to meet people. It wasn't about the it's money. It much more social. It, it was social. It was about meeting individuals and having good conversations and witty banter and it, then so taking these relationships that. 
off the felt and into real life. And I think the moment money's there, uh, all the social aspect goes out the door because yeah, everyone's focused on winning the money. We used to actually run a poker tournament at our house once a year. It was an M&M tournament. Was it peanut butter M&Ms? It was all different types of M&Ms. Really? They actually had different chip values. But wow. the concept was people came and they buy in for something, something like $2 or $5 and all the money went to order pizza for everyone who was playing. The game was strictly for fun, and we had blocks of M&Ms. So for 500 chips, instead you got a block of peanut M&Ms. But, but, but I, I'd probably lose because I'd eat all my M&Ms. I know, right? Everyone had that problem. And at the very end, you know, the people who busted out, we were nice. We shared some of the M&Ms with them. Not a lot, but some. But No, <laughs> I, I'd still I'd eat all the M&Ms. It'd be like, Shira, you're big blind. Oh. It, nothing. I, I've got nothing. I, I ate my chips. Yeah, it's, it was actually quite a big problem. It was. But you know what's on my wish list? What is on your wish my list? My wish list is one big thing. It's a personal thing that maybe next year Robbie will take us with him. Come on. Oh my God. To That'd the PCA? Be great. Absolutely. We could go to the PCA together with Robbie. We would do a show at the PCA, the Burn and Turn. It would be Live awesome. Live from the Bahamas. Quasi live from the Bahamas. Yeah, totally, because, you know, we would be doing tons of work, right? Because Robbie, I'm sure, is at the PCA currently doing tons Actually, of work. Actually, yeah, well, when he's not complaining about the weather, sorry, 70s and, and Complaining about raining. the weather. Yeah, he's complaining about the weather. We've had snow, Robbie. It was snowing. What weather are you complaining about? He's, he's complaining about the weather. Oh, you poor baby. I is know, it, right? Is it tough for you in the Bahamas? It must be. <laughs> it must be very tough. I'm so sorry. Maybe you need to wear some socks with your sandals. Oh, you know, I like the socks with sandals. Look. No. I do. No, sometimes. Shane, we can't be friends anymore. I'm sorry. Sometimes my feet are cold, so I put on socks, and I'm too lazy to put on shoes, so I put on sandals. But you have to it take works. the sandals off to put on the socks, so no, why can't you? No, because then your feet are cold again. I'm so confused by you. <laughs> so confused by you. Anyway, um, there's a lot going on right now. Aside from the crazy amount of tournaments going on, over 100 different tournaments, they've got all these fun events like breakfast with the pros, there's an Atari room. Yeah, Robbie told me all about this Atari room, but he made me think that it was uh, that it was a feature that they're putting into the Poker Update studio, into the offices yeah. here. And I was so excited. I'm like, all right, filming day. I'm going to be sitting in that game room all day long. And then he's like, no, it's in the Bahamas. I'm like, Robbie. I hate you. So much. So much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know... I kind of asked Robbie to bring me back a PCA sweatshirt. Did you ask him to bring you back anything? I didn't, but if you're bringing me anything, Entenmann's chocolate chip cookies. Please, it's the one thing I miss from America. Entenmann's chocolate chip cookies. Oh my God, I could totally eat those chocolate donuts from Entenmann's. Oh, those are great also. Okay, we're totally not talking anything about Anything Entenmann's, poker. all right. Let's, 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 <laughs> bring it back we to talk, poker. As we stop talking about pastries, let's bring it back to poker. Has Robbie given us anything from his Actually, uh, trip Actually, yes, yes. He had an amazing interview with Daniel Negreanu no yesterday. No way. Yeah, there are so many interviews he has lined up. But, uh, but Negreanu, actually, that's got to be the icing on the cake oh, for him. It was. It was like the first interview was Daniel Negreanu. And we actually have a clip. Are we going to play it now? Yeah, we're totally going to play it All now. All right, let's do it. Play Check it. Check it out. So, Daniel, for the PokerUpdate.com Weekly Burn and Turn, Turn Show, who's your favorite co-host, me or Shimmy the Fish? Who is Shimmy the Fish? That's what I thought. Ah, see? <laughs> who's Shimmy the Fish? Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? What? Negrano, we are going to have words, buddy, someday. Who's Shimmy the Fish? Hello? And you picked Robbie among the two of us? He doesn't even have a beard. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, aside from Daniel Negrano, we're getting um, interviews with Jason Somerville, Elkie, Chris Moneymaker, so many people. So you definitely need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So that way you can see all the interviews as they come in and also keep up with us on Twitter. We're going to be tweeting about the event and we have so much great coverage coming from the PCA. So you definitely want to stay tuned. Absolutely. And while we're talking about the pros, let's bring it to our favorite time of the show. Name that pro. Name that pro. Shira, are you ready? I'm going to be asking you the questions yes, this time. Yes. How confident are you? Um. Uh, yeah. Not confident? You're not at all confident? I am about a six on the confidence. A six on the confidence yeah. scale? 
You don't know the answer right now? No, I don't know. If, it, if I, it, honestly, honest, honest to God, you don't oh know God, the answer. Oh my God, this. No, we are God. not, because ladies and gentlemen, I have, a, I have something to tell you. No. We, it has come to light that she no, knew come on. No, we have the to answer. play. We have to play so, this game. So, we have prepared a special set of questions for Shira because it turns out that Shira found out the answer before the show. Oh, you're such a jerk. <laughs> nice try, Shira. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for Name That Pro where Shira doesn't know the answer? Here we go. Are we ready? Want to throw out a, want to throw out a, a guest right here? By the way, I want to just, you know, shout out to James. Thank you, man. With love from James, Shira. <laughs> All right, Shira, before we start with the questions, you could throw out any answer. Um, Go for it. If you get it, we're gonna, that's going to be amazing. Barbara Enright. Barbara Enright. Is it? Barbara Enright. <laughs> All right, don't worry. It's okay. By the way, my first time on Name That Pro, when it wasn't like an actual pro, I missed the answer also. So it's okay to miss it. All right. Here we go. Question number one. This pro studied microbiology in college and paid for her tuition playing 2-5 and 5-10 No Limit Hold'em cash games. Hmm. Was it Liv Bory? Was it Liv Bory? No. <laughs> but that was a really good guess. That was a very good guess. That was very well done. All right, you still got two more questions. Don't worry. Here we go. You guys ready? Question the, question the second. This pro has two WSOP circuit rings, two WPT regional titles, and finished runner-up in a 2015 WSOP event. This pro's name is... Hold on a sec. God, I'm like listing the names in my head. Blanking, blanking. It is a girl. I, I figured it's a girl. The, the amounts of That's she's <laughs> and her is kind that of... That might have just been to throw her off. <laughs> That would be really awkward, Shimmy, in which case I, I, I count this as Yeah, that, that would be Um, Is it... It's not Vanessa's self. Um, I, uh, Linda Harmon. Linda Harmon. Is it Linda Harmon? <laughs> All right, don't worry, though. You got one more, yes. you got one more shot at this, okay? okay? And again, I want to just prep you. It's okay to lose these things, okay. all right? I shouldn't be the only one that misses it. <laughs> Question number three. Here we go. This former sponsored pro found love and marriage at the poker table, but later cashed in her chips to upgrade to Jason Mercier. Maria Ho. Maria Ho. No, I know it's not the answer. It's not Maria Ho. That was a really good try, though. Thank you did you. that really, Thank really you well. Thank you very much. Okay, the actual answer. Anyone get this? Is Natasha Barber. Ah. But that was very good. Thank you. It's a lot harder when you don't know the answers in the, uh, from the start, isn't it? Yeah. I have a feeling James is in a lot of trouble. Sorry, man. He is. Run, James, run! He is. <laughs> well done, though. This Thank was you. fun. Robbie, we miss you, man. All right, and that's it for this week's episode of the PokerUpdate.com Weekly Burn and Turn. I'm Shira. And I'm Shimmy. And next week. Sorry, James.